Thank you for the karanga. I declare this congregation to be in session. Please remain standing and join with us in singing the traditional graduation song, Gari Amis, the words of which are printed on the screen. <laughs> Please be seated. Aina waka, aina manga fakahi, aina taifa, tena koto katoa, kia arana, talofa lava, malo elomali, fokalofa lahiatu, talofa ni, fokatalofa atu, nisabula, nimenhau. Namaste, Mahaba. A very warm welcome to this your ceremony, one of six here in Auckland this week that are the first of our graduation ceremony that continues in Manawatu and Wellington over the coming weeks. I wish to acknowledge fellow council members and academic staff on the stage behind me, professional staff who made this event possible, and distinguished guests. My name is Chris Kelly, I'm a very proud Massey graduate and have been serving as Chancellor for the past year. This week we have a total of 1,205 students crossing the stage. Of these, 25 will be conferred with the highest academic qualification the university offers, 
a doctoral degree. At this ceremony, we have a total of 271 graduands, of whom 61 are masters and two PhDs. By the end of this year, Massey University will have produced approximately 6,000 new graduates, bringing our total alumni family around the world to more than 130,000. Today is a day of celebration, it's your day. It's an opportunity for the university and you, your whānau, your friends and loved ones to recognise the hard work you have done and what you have achieved as a result of that hard work. Modern technology increasingly makes it easier for us to connect with one another. It means you can share your big day with an audience far wider than those who are present with you in person. All our ceremonies are now streamed live on the internet and there is a link to the Massey University homepage which I'm sure many of you will have already discovered. Please feel free to put the link on Facebook or text or tweet or email it to anyone who is unable to be here. It will be a permanent record of what I'm sure for many of you will be amongst one of your proudest moments. And while talking of recognition, it's important that you remember to thank all those people who have backed you and contributed to your success during your studies, your family, friends and importantly the faculty and support staff of the university. To ensure they don't forget, I'd like you now to join me in acknowledging them. The ceremony we're about to go through today is very traditional. It has its roots in graduation ceremonies developed some 800 years ago. Traditions such as the robes we wear, capping, the mace, the singing of Gaudi Amis, and awarding honorary degrees to outstanding citizens link us to the strong heritage of universities. Universities are institutions of higher learning in which the teaching and learning environment is provided by academics actively involved in the creation of new knowledge through research and scholarship. You will graduate today as a beneficiary of a university education. As university graduates, you will be critical to the future social, economic and cultural development of your communities. As a graduate of Massey University, you will inherit the reputation of this highly regarded institution. The reputation of a university is built on the achievements of its past and current faculty and its past students. Evidence of the achievements of our faculty and alumni is all around us. To mention a few, we have designer and creative director Sir Richard Taylor, fashion designer Kate Sylvester, and of course teacher and World Cup winning rugby coach Sir Graham Henry, and Ross McEwen, a BBS graduate in 1980, who is now global head of the Bank of Scotland. The university is a major New Zealand business with revenues in excess of $400 million annually and, a, and is a very significant employer in the three regions in which it has a presence. The management is led by the Vice-Chancellor who is the equivalent to the Chief Executive Officer and governance is a responsibility of the University Council, currently consisting of a mix of appointees and members elected by students, staff and our large alumni body. You may be aware that the government has passed an amendment to the Education Act requiring all university councils to reduce in size from the current maximum of 12 members to a, current, uh, to a new maximum of 12 members on the grounds that it will be more businesslike. The Massey University Council is currently consulting stakeholders on what size it should be within that framework. It's important to note that universities, however, are quite different from other businesses. Our prices are controlled by the government's fee-setting regulations. We have social responsibilities to students, to our staff and to advance learning to society as a whole. The range of stakeholders we have is much wider than a company's and therefore demands a much wider representation. I believe we must ensure that we retain diversity on the, new, on the university's governing body and we plan to complete the consultation this year and have decisions made about the makeup and size of the council in time for the start of the next calendar year. It's important on these occasions to celebrate some of Massey's successes. 
Last year, we celebrated 50 years as a university and launched our updated strategy called Shaping the Nation and Taking the Best to the World. The short title is The Road to 2025. And the major shift is to push out our time horizon to just over a decade from now and put in place our responses to the force, forces that drive not only Massey's future, but also New Zealand's things like globalisation, technology-enabled learning, population diversity, partnerships with other organisations around the world, and of course, the growth in our largest city, Auckland. This year, we're experiencing growth in, in, in enrolments, including international enrolments, bucking a trend that has seen many New Zealand universities struggle to meet their targets. In part, this is demographics. Outside Auckland, the number of school leavers is forecast to stabilise, or in some cases, decrease. However, this semester we have opened our $26 million accommodation complex on the Auckland campus at Albany. Tioranga is the single biggest construction project on the campus to date and has a total floor area of 6,900 square metres. It consists of three halls of residence, 14 five-bedroom departments, and also 12 studio apartments, making the total number of beds available to 292 it's already greatly enhanced campus life. Going forward, we're considering bold plans for Albany, our growth campus. We're considering investing in infrastructure which will allow the opening of the West Precinct to enable significant capital expenditure to accommodate additional students in line with our growth strategy. One of the advantages Massey has in its globalisation agenda is that we are a diverse university with a broad range of strengths. There are many compatibilities in those areas of strengths, in design and in arts. Agriculture, in which we rank among the best in the world, an outstanding achievement in my view, is underpinned by science. And of course, food production remains New Zealand's biggest business, which in turn links to nutrition and health, both human and animal. Our diversity in campuses and modes of learning gives students options that other providers are unable to offer. Key developments for the Massey Business School include, a new program, include new programs like the Masters of Analysis and Bachelor of Business and Retail Management. In relation to the latter degree, we have appointed Jonathan Elms to the Sir Stephen Tyndall Chair in Retail Management. In the past year, 10 university-led research projects received research funding of more than $5 million from the government's Marsden Fund. In October, Massey was selected to host the government's new Food Safety Science and Research Centre, which will receive an additional five million in funding to deliver food safety research. In November, distinguished professor Peter Schurwitz-Heiger was announced as a recipient of New Zealand's most prodigious science award, the Royal Society's $100,000 Rutherford Medal. And as our recently retired College of Sciences professor Pro Pro-Vice-Chancellor Professor Robert Anderson noted, seven of the last Rutherford Medal winners have been from Massey. In December, it was announced a that a collective housing and health research team, which includes five Massey University staff as leaders or members, has won New Zealand's most valuable award for scientific achievement, the $500,000 Prime Minister's Science Prize. Further, Massey is playing its part in the upcoming ANZAC ceremony celebrations. We have leased our Dominion building in the Wellington campus to the government to allow Sir Peter Jackson's World War I Museum exhibition to be displayed. I urge any of you who are visiting Wellington to take the time to view the display. It is most impressive. It's important that young people recognise the value of ongoing learning and tertiary qualifications in a world where the nature of employment and types of jobs people do is changing rapidly. That means that those who succeed will be those who have learned how to learn, how to adopt, and how to adapt. Congratulations to all of you who have taken up the challenge to be where you are today. You will graduate proud of your achievement, but also honoured by the reputational man mantle that you have inherited. I challenge you to go forth as Massey alumni to make your own contribution to grow your own reputation and in doing so further add to the proud heritage that you are now part of. 
As part of your journey, we anticipate many of you will come back to us to face the never-ending quest to keep your skills and knowledge up to date. You can be assured that Massey will be there to meet that need, whether it be through a course in full-time study or part-time through our world-class distance learning program. Finally, I would urge you to stay connected with your alma mater and your university family through our active alumni association. Congratulations, continue to work hard and enjoy yourselves. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. By the authority of the Council of Massey University, I, Chris Kelly, Chancellor, will now award the certificates and diplomas and confer the degrees on those to be presented and in those to those in absentia. Chancellor, the head of the School of Communication, Journalism and Marketing and the associate head of the School of Management will present to you graduands and recipients of certificates and diplomas in the Massey Business School. Chancellor, uh, I have the honor to present for the award of Diploma in Business Studies uh, the candidates I am about to name. Anna Jane Charlton. Jordan Philip Clark. Gyanambal Hilton. <laughs> Jessica Dorothy McGregor. <laughs> Keith Daniel Murray. Melanie Ann Hope. <laughs> Bamidere Blessing Adesina. <laughs> Jing An. Alexander Anastasovsky. <laughs> Tracy Marie Appleton. <laughs> Stephanie Marie Armstrong. Brooke Wendy Marie Arter. <laughs> Rebecca Ann Ashwood. <laughs> Sherry Bostris Beckett. Katie Elizabeth Birchall. <laughs> Megan Susan Bird. <laughs> Alexandra Patricia Blake, Massey Scholar. Justin Roy Brewer. Gemma Marie Bug. Michael Edward Candy.
Joel Daniel Carter, <laughs> Josie Louise Carter, <laughs> Francis Teresa Sebelo, <laughs> Darren Sellers, Massey Scholar. Demelza Elizabeth Charlie's Cork. Andrea Catherine Charlton. Alice Faye Clark. Sam James Claxton. <laughs> Cherie Jane Daniel. <laughs> Benjamin Hardima Peter Kino Davies. Samani Vaishankani Lavanya Dolubi Gedera Amadasari. <laughs> Megan Kathleen Barbara Grace Donnelly. <laughs> Paul Frederick Dowd. Nicole Claire Elliott, Massey Scholar. Kate Sarah Fitzgerald. D. Gao. Benjamin Daniel Gillies. <laughs> Katharina Gordon. <laughs> Kirsty Teresa Gradwell, Massey Scholar. W. Mudian Selege Pinibindu Lahiru Kumari Gunasekara. <laughs> Stephen Edward Hilson. Rodney Kenneth Honan. Bo Hong. <laughs> Madison Binney Horton, Massey Scholar. <laughs> Hong Pang Hua. Yuan Huang. <laughs> Blair Ivor Humphrey. <laughs> Shalini Jennings. Samuel John Jessup. Mm -hmm. 
Janine Helen Jones. <laughs> Wu Yong Chung. <laughs> Matthew David Nosley. Kyle Charles Lagerwall. Jared Laidlaw. Sanaya Leroux. Min Young Lee, <laughs> Ryan Andrew Lewis, <laughs> Wei Lin. Avon Makuini Dorothy Matchup. <laughs> Stephen Robert McCormick. <laughs> Jessica Kararaina Patricia McDuff. Paula Rose Melton. <laughs> Julia Elizabeth Mitford. <laughs> Ramesh Bahir Fawad Nagib. Ki Hong Nam. <laughs> Jordan Luke Nankavel. <laughs> Stefan David Ponyhouse. Nikhil Mahendra Prasad. <laughs> Fei Chin. <laughs> Shereen Sharmani Reeswebb. Carly Francis Remkes. Zainab Rikabi. Christy Ellen Rosewarn. Nicholas James Rivenetti. <laughs> Javed Rafiq Shakul Hamid. <laughs> Thank you, Chancellor. It is now my great pleasure to invite Lisa Miles Heal to address the graduands and congregation. Lisa is the Chief Technology Officer of Unleashed Software, 
His stated goal is to build a world-class development team to ensure the delivery of innovative and user-friendly products. She has more than 50, 15 years experience in the IT sector and is known in the industry for efforts to encourage young women into IT careers and leadership roles generally. The mother of a 12-year-old, she took 20 years to complete her undergraduate qualification, a Bachelor of Business and Information Technology, to which she has since added a graduate diploma in business. Lisa says she lived in Christchurch. When she lived in Christchurch, she used to make fun of Aucklanders. But after the earthquake in 2011, she moved to the North Shore and now says she wouldn't live anywhere else. I'm sure you'll find Lisa's address very interesting, Lisa. set up here. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, members of council and university staff, thank you for that kind introduction. I feel a little embarrassed about the truth. And for the opportunity to speak here today and share in these celebrations for the 2015 graduates. Firstly, congratulations to you out there, business graduates, emerging leaders in management, communications and technology. As a CTO, I think you've made smart choices. Pragmatic, practical and essential, your degrees will serve you well and industry is waiting for you. Family and friends, congratulations to you too. Your support, encouragement and I'm sure in some cases deep pockets has made today a reality. On behalf of industry and the future employers of these graduates, I thank you. Well, that was the easy part of this speech done and now for the hard part. What to say for the rest of my time slot? What seemed like a great idea when I said yes to coming today got a lot more nerve-wracking when I realised that the yardstick for graduation speech excellence is that afterwards you should get a book offer. How will I keep your attention? I have no flash presentation or chocolate snacks, and even this lecture, which does make me appear a little bit taller than I am, stops me from moving about this stage. And oh, there's not a whiteboard in sight. Man, this is going to be really hard for me. So I'll need to stick to the basics. I'm going to speak for 10 hopefully short minutes, use only one quote, tell three stories, and close with something interesting. So here goes. Let's start by asking, why am I up here, and why should you look up from your smartphones, I know some of you are out there doing that, for the next few minutes to listen to me? Aside from our shared taste in classic black clothing, I'm a lot like some of you. My qualifications show that I've studied some of the same things as you, business, IT, marketing. Since I can see some more mature faces in the audience, I bet a few of you came to your degrees later. I finished mine only a few years ago, as you've heard. And some of you may already be working in your dream job or trying to get into that dream job by completing these studies, so well done you. Thankfully, there are some women in the audience, which sometimes in my line of business there isn't and there always should be. I can see a keenness to improve yourself, focus and some good organisation skills, especially those of you who found parking out there today. We are all learners and listeners and thinkers, and like you, I am also on a journey. So that might be why I'm up here. My journey has been a little longer than yours, and thankfully, it's gone in the right direction. The right direction for me means that I have a job that I love going to every day, with life balance and reward and challenge. Personally, I have got to a place where I can be me, not someone else's idea of what I should be, but truly me. Professionally, I've worked in the UK, Canada, the States, and visited some amazing parts of the world for business like Vietnam and Israel. I've had roles in government organisations, the not-for-profit sector, large American corporates, homegrown medium-sized businesses, and technology startups. I've led teams of over 100 people, many smarter than me, and by contrast, I've also worked on projects where we relied 100% on volunteers. There is still more for me to achieve professionally, and I am now confident, rather than unsure, that I will. On reflection, I've done quite a bit, and it offers me some great experiences to share. And here's my one quote. As Kevin Spacey said, if you're lucky enough to do well, it's your responsibility to send the elevator back down. So, today, for a wee bit, Think of me as your elevator attendant, and I have three stories to share to help you in your upwards journey. Story one is about a Learjet. 
When I was a child, I wanted to be a flight attendant. We called them air hostesses back then. That's very politically incorrect now. I was raised in a very working class family. My mother had me at 16, and I can actually remember my mother's 21st birthday party in the 70s. I grew up in Wainuiomata and then Stokes Valley, also called Nappy Valley, both suburbs of Outer Wellington. Things didn't quite go so well, and I was in foster care at 14. At 17, I realised I was both too short and too short-sighted to apply to Air New Zealand to achieve my air hostess career goal. Already working, so, I came to Auckland at 18, knowing only one person, and well, as they say, the rest is on LinkedIn. However, for me, achieving career success has not been the size of the paycheck, and I've had some good ones, the number of staff I led, or even my job title, but a single experience I had at 31. At that time, I was working in the States for a company called Peace Software, one of the first New Zealand tech companies that took on the world. And with a client, I traveled to Vancouver on a private company Learjet. A Learjet, on which you help yourself to the bar and food, and the pilot addresses you personally. Not bad for someone who thought being a flight attendant would be the pinnacle of her international air travel. <laughs> Possibly something I will never do again, but it was as memorable then as it is now, 14 years later. Now you know how old I am. My Learjet experience taught me that no matter where you come from, your background, your life story, what you achieve now and in the future is in your control. Aim high and don't ever sell yourself short. Story two is about battery operated radios. Fast forward to the 4th of September 2010, where our young family is living in Christchurch. We had just finalized the design of a beautiful house renovation and both of our careers were taking off with local but globally successful software companies. My partner and I had been out very late. 1 a.m. is a big night out when you have small kids, by the way. But by 4.30 a.m., we were scrambling under doorways and bed frames as our house shook violently around us. It sobered us up pretty damn quick. Realizing that we had been in a big earthquake, and as good Kiwis do, we reached for the civil defense pages at the back of the telephone book. Problem was, even with our modern lives with everything we could possibly need at a fingertip or an internet search away, we quickly realized we were in big trouble. With no power, landlines, internet, or a working mobile network, we were entirely cut off from the world because we didn't have a single battery-operated radio in the house. From that moment forward, our life started going not quite to plan. By March 2011, and 6,000 aftershocks later, we were in Auckland living from suitcases in the spare room of friends. I had no job, our kids were stressed, and our insurance company advised that it could take at least a year for our house to be repaired. It ended up taking two. Our life plan was in tatters, but our life was not. We just needed to adapt, adjust, make a new plan. So we did, and here we are now living in Rosse Bay, working in Takapuna, enjoying the most awesome quality of life in what I call paradise, and still supporting the Crusaders. We have new goals and ambitions, but this plan is nothing like it was. Arguably, it is better. What this time of huge change taught me was that having a plan is great, but we need to be able to plan to make new ones. So we need to be able to make new ones when situations change. Opportunities and challenges can make a great plan useless. Always be able to adapt, always be flexible, and always be resilient. Story three is about Instagram. I have a very strong willed, and I have no idea where that comes from, 12-year-old um, daughter. Parenting a 12-y in this age of social media is scary, very scary. My daughter connects with kids via Instagram and Snapchat. iMessaging is already last year's thing, and well, texting just isn't even done anymore. I used to have a nice, organized phone list of all my daughter's friends and their parents, sport friends, school friends, neighborhood friends. This year, I went to redo the phone list and could only get four actual phone numbers of friends, and I'm told it would be too weird to ask someone for their actual phone number. <laughs> By contrast, however, my daughter is following 215 people on Instagram, and 610 people are following her. So for now, good parent that I am, I have access to her Instagram accounts, or well, the ones I know about, and I use them at any time to digitally parent. Anyhow, a few months back, my daughter went missing after nighttime soccer training. I called and texted and there was no reply. I was worried, so I did the unthinkable. 
I went onto her Instagram account and posted a message asking if anyone knew where she was. Within a minute or so, I had three replies, all telling me she was playing an extra game with the boys' team and even a comment about how her game was going. <laughs> how powerful is that? Exceptionally. How prepared was I for this communication channel? Not very, but I need to be. So yep, it's done. I created my own account and at 45, I'm learning how to use Instagram and Snapchat is next. What this reinforces for me is that we must communicate well and create connections using the channels that our audiences prefer. And even though these channels are constantly changing, good communication principles still apply. So spend time on getting communication right. I asked someone from the office to join us here this morning to help illustrate my point. Kevin is down the road, but he can see you, talk and move. Let's welcome him on stage and hope he doesn't trip on the robe or fall into the first, first row. <laughs> they can now see the back of you, Kevin. <laughs> you need to be a bit more modest. Anyhow, we use this robot to enable our US staff to sit at the table of our meetings and they actually do take a place at the table during the meeting. They control the robot and can use non-verbal cues like movements to increase the quality of our communication. This channel was only a concept for us less than six months ago, and we can't wait to see what the next model looks like. So that's it. Three stories and my job here today as elevator attendant is over. To recap, first floor, aim high. Your past doesn't define you, you define you. Level two, have a great plan, but be resilient. Opportunity and challenge might require many new plans. And level three, be great at communicating and connecting. It will help you every day. Kevin is off now, and we both hope to see you soon riding your own elevator in industry. Congratulations again, and thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for that great speech. And uh, I love the robot. Maybe you could take my place at some stage. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed your comment that plans are OK, but these days we must always learn to be able to adopt to new circumstances, which tend to change very regularly. We will now continue with the conferment of degrees and the award of u university certificates and diplomas. Chancellor, uh, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Business Studies, the graduands I am about to name. Alison Claire Smith. <laughs> Thomas Anthony Smith. Adam Michael Snowden. <laughs> Mina Song. <laughs> Tao Song. Richard Lee Stone. <laughs> Shang Ming Tan. <laughs> Kelly Teresa Taylor. <laughs> Benjamin Charles Teague. Nadia Ruth Temple. <laughs> T 
Tanyada Tioma Popsuk. Courtney Georgia Tremlett. Shanae Tyler Tuhara. Benjamin Scott Tuddy. Trina Roberta Yuri. Kevin Van Wyck. Dominique Elizabeth Vicini. Jason Alex Waddell. Bo Wang. Can Lin Huang. <laughs> Melissa Ann Wap. <laughs> Anna Rose Wishart. Yangxiang Wang. See how she is. Li Shang. Kyung Bok Yoon. <laughs> Shun Bin Tsao. <laughs> Meng Chi Jiao. Dan Chu, <laughs> uh, Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Communication the graduates I am about to name. Alicia Dawn Allcraft. Courtney Marie Evans. <laughs> Jessica Gay Harvey. <laughs> Felicity Jane Heaven. Catherine Elsie Fernie Kennedy. <laughs> Jessica Wen I Koo. <laughs> Francesca Alice March. Ruipeli Vakataratara Mataitini. Yeah. 
Olivia Pamela Panjik, Massey Scholar. Rochelle Potkriter. Danielle Jane Smith. <laughs> Kelly Leanne Stewart. <laughs> Gabriella Greta Joan Whitting. Juan Juan Tsang. <laughs> Laura Chung. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Business Studies, the graduand I am about to name, Lydia Ann Martin. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the award of Graduate Diploma in Business Studies, the candidates I am about to name. Frank William Aldridge. Gail Elizabeth Body. Krishnal Koshik Chandra. Karen Nina Michelle Duncan. Peter John Francis. Gareth Michael Hickey. Glenn Mackespark. <laughs> Valerie Annette Raggett. <laughs> Christian Russell. Azamat Saralaev. <laughs> Alexis Vandalay. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the award of graduate diploma in journalism studies the candidates I'm about to name. Michael Stephen Boter. And Alice Elizabeth Moon. Thank you, Chancellor. Discovered in her early teens, Lisa Mar Lizzie Marvelli was on the road at age 16. Described as a true songbird by the then Prime Minister as a national treasure, her musical life has been something of a wild ride, encompassing two major international signings, two top de 10 albums, two European tours, concerts in Asia and Arabia, amongst others, and a smash hit charity single. 
Lizzie will herself be graduating later this week and was a distance learner. Please join with me in welcoming Lizzie Marvelli to the stage. This song is called Glory Days. I'm like a tiger in a cage, staring out at the rain. I can hear you calling out my name, but I gotta break the to the sea I've got to 
Congratulations, everybody. It's such an honor for me to be here today, and I'm very excited about graduating later this week. This last song is called My Own Hero. I walk to the beat of my feet and carry my heart home with me, and I'll do it all on my own. With no one picking at my bones I don't miss the things that you'd say I don't miss the demons and saints I don't miss the taste on my tongue I don't miss the tar in my lungs I made a choice To save myself To heal the fall And I'll be my own hero I'll be my own hero I'll be my own I'll be my own I'll be my own hero I'll be my Then let love turn to hate I'll stop it before it begins I made a choice To save myself To heal the voice I gave myself And I'll be my own It's an empty house 
But I'm not alone and I'll be my own Thank you. Lizzie, thank you very much for those three wonderful songs. We will now continue with the conferment of degrees in the award of university certificates and diplomas. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for the award of postgraduate diploma in business and administration the candidates I am about to name. Tara Jasmine Ahmed. <clears throat> Emily Vaughan Carter. Sarah Jenny Kleins, Nee Vanderhurst with merit. <clears throat> Tikiri Yadora Yassis de Souza with merit. <clears throat> Rakna Devi. Sarah Rachel Gate. <clears throat> Sylvia Haywood. <clears throat> Lee Megan Hustleman, Nee Hughes with merit. Fei Fei Ji. <clears throat> Shi Yao Li. <clears throat> Nithu Elizabeth Matthews with merit. Mohammed Faid <clears throat> Tian Shu Su <clears throat> Godong Tang. Adit Sam Vagazi with distinction. Claire Alice Walshaw. Xia Yuan Wang. Carla Jade Watts. <clears throat> Lee
Leon Oliver West with distinction. Jalu Wu with merit. Miao Zhong. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the award of postgraduate diploma in health services management, the candidates I'm about to name. Michelle Fleur Atkinson with distinction. Charlotte Rose. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Bachelor of Business Studies with honors, the graduates I'm about to name. Simon Wallace Moore, first class honors. Claire Susan St. Pierre, first class honours. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Business Administration the graduands I'm about to name Anthony William Bloom. Gabrielle Ann Stain. Rhino Stain. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Business Studies, the graduands I'm about to name. Tahir Humad Musaba Al Kalbani. <laughs> Sitong Chen, first class honors. Sarah Frances Hanna. Marcus Milfart, second class honors. Benglin Mo. Joanna Carey Walkinshaw. <laughs> Shin Yang, second class honors. <laughs> Yi Shung. Chancellor, I have the honor to present for graduation in the degree of Master of Management, the graduands I'm about to name. Sokaina Alhasni, with distinction. <laughs> yeah. 
Gioma Lupo Maria Alamano. Abdullah Ziz, Abdullah M. Al-Shiri. Iman Abdulrahman F. Al-Zwaid, with merit. Margaret Anderson. Wasa Yusuf Torfik Bader. Mark Edward Brewer with distinction. Shaman Shagani. Yang Chung. Chen Xin Chen. Shi Yu Cheng. Shuling Ding. <laughs> Lindsay Richard Eastgate, First Class Honours, Master at Scholar. <laughs> Yannika Furi with merit. Peng Gao. <laughs> Lei Han. <laughs> Tsieng Han. Yun He, Second Class Honours. Chelsea Rose Henry with merit. Shun Yi Jia, Second Class Honours. <laughs> Tian Ching Li, with merit. <laughs> An Chi Liu, Second Class Honours. Brendan Courtney Mason with merit. <laughs> Paul Wallace McMichael with distinction. Bukili Mukai Murabeki with merit. (Applause) 
Ai Win Ong, First Class Honours. Chi Hang Pan. Pamela Sue Peters, Nee Watson. Robert Douglas Ziggy, Pigeon. Karen Pierka Seidelmeyer. Yi Shan, Second Class Honours. Malcolm Victor Sherwood with merit. <laughs> Hong Yu Shi. <laughs> Jin Song. Rachel Margaret Thomas, Nee Rushton, with merit. <laughs> Yong Shi Tu. John Gosney Walker, First Class Honours. <laughs> Ling Xiong Wang. <laughs> Daria Jill Williamson, with distinction. Min Xing Xu. Xu Lu Xu. Sheng Hao Zong with merit. Ying Zhong, Second Class Honours. <laughs> Zhu Fei Zhao. <laughs> Wee Zi Zhou. Thank you, Chancellor. Chancellor, as you can see, we've reached the final two students uh, for this morning's ceremony. Uh, for the audience, that means that you can make as much noise as you like for the next two candidates as they walk across the stage. Chancellor, I have the honour to present for graduation the degree of Doctor of Philosophy the graduands I am about to name. David Robert Ellis, Doctoral Scholar.
significant numbers of expatriate New Zealanders are returning home to live each year. Mr. Ellis investigated and found strong similarities between the expectations and experiences of repatriating New Zealanders. He developed a new theory to take account of the social information age that enables these similarities to develop. Please welcome Dr. Ellis. Shakure Marie Yuvasin Sir Vaya, doctoral scholar. <laughs> Mrs. Sir Vaya examined the relationship between corporate, social responsibility, and human resource management in large New Zealand organizations. She found that this relationship is necessarily two-way. Her findings suggest that such relationships are contingent upon a range of contextual factors. Please welcome Dr. Savaya. At the conclusion of the ceremony, guests are requested to remain in their seats until the processions have assembled in the foyer. I declare this congregation to be adjourned. Please join us in singing the national anthem, God Defend New Zealand, the words of which are printed on the screen. We will begin with the Maori version of the anthem. Please stand. <laughs> 